Chapter 25 When the men were gone, the old woman came back to the cabin. She had me follow her out the door and cling close to the wall until we were on the far side of the cabin. Once there, I followed her to the edge of the island. She knelt and felt around in the darkness until she found a rope tied to a log. She began pulling. A soft rustling sound made me glance toward the marsh grass. A small boat slipped from its hiding place in the tall weeds and glided through the shimmering moonlight that danced on top of the black water. With a finger to her lips, the old woman shushed me and motioned to the bottom of the boat. I take you home. Too dangerous to go by self at night, she whispered. But we need hurry. You hide so nobody see. I go, make sure the dumb man in bush still be here when you get back. Quiet as I could, I climbed into the boat and sat down while she scurried toward the lime bush. If not be still, I heard her caution Bubba. The bear's gonna eat you. I come back, either find you be very still in bush or find bear with fat tummy. She brought a long pole with her when she had returned to the cabin, from the cabin. Shushing me again, she had me lie down in the bottom of the boat. Quiet as a dewdrop forming on a blade of grass, she used the pole to shove the boat away from the island and into the swamp grass. Once there, she let me sit up, but we were well away from the island before she would let me speak. You don't really think the bears will eat Bubba, do you? No, she answered with a sly smile. Give the bears special treat. Bologna and strawberries and grape jelly in the bowl. Why they want to eat something as stinky and ugly as Bubba when got bologna and strawberries? They not bother him less than he scare him. He not scare him, he be real quiet. Without a sound, the boat slipped from the cover of the swamp grass onto the open still water of the river. Using the long pole, she kept us near the far bank and moved quickly downstream. I didn't even realize how tightly my fists were clenched until I felt my fingers begin to tingle. I flexed my hands and looked back at the old woman. Bubba's going to know I told you. I helped you. How Bubba know? He's still in bush. His friends will see us when we get to the house. They'll see the boat and see you and me and know that men see nothing but place where feet step, she interrupted me. You be home in bed and I be back on island before day get there. With a crooked finger, she motioned across the river. I could see the glow of flashlights moving single file down the hill toward the riverbank. The noise from feet snapping branches and twigs sounded, sounded like a herd of elephants walking on eggshells. I'm going to die, a quivering voice whined. I'm bleeding to death. Ah, uh, shut up, another voice grumped. You ain't hardly bleeding anymore. Few stitches and you'll be good as new. But I'm bleeding. It hurts. Hurry, please. Shut up. We're walking as fast as we can. It ain't easy carrying you through this jungle. Their voices and the racket they made crunching through the brush faded behind us as the old woman slipped the boat through the still water. In the daylight, it took me 20 to 30 minutes to make the walk from our house to the witch's island. On the river, it only took 10 minutes to get home. Mama must have had every light in the house on. It shined like a beacon from across the river, across the dark river. Mama's going to kill me, I sighed. I bet she's worried sick. The old woman slipped the boat next to the bank and laid the pole across it. Dare be other men like Bubba and his friends, she told me. It be best if people not hear what you see happen tonight. Why? Lot of men come to scare one old woman. Instead, one old woman scared them and make them run away. They, they have to make a big story about how powerful old witch be and how mean and evil she is. By time they carry her friends back home, story get bigger and bigger. When tell story, nobody else want to mess with witch of Blackwater Swamp. You tell of dolls stuffed with chemicals I find in trash cans. Tell Deb just big turtles bite men in water and bears only come to fill fat tummy with grape jelly. That not so scary. Best let them think make up gooder story. She waited for me to get out. I didn't. Mama would be furious at me for leaving the house and not coming back until so long after dark. In fact, I, pr I was probably in so much trouble. 
I would never be able to go get out of it. She'd never believe me. But if both of us tell you what, I smiled. I'll make a deal with you. I won't tell how you scared those men off your island if you'll come and tell Mama where I was and no. Mama was mad all right. With all what with all the cars parked by the bridge and me not being there and her not knowing what was going on, she was in a total snit when I sneaked back my sneaked in the back door. She cried and hugged me. She yelled and scolded and cried some more and hugged me again. Then she told me I could never leave the house by myself ever again and that I was grounded for the rest of my life. And finally, she looked past to where the old woman suddenly appeared from the shadows behind the back steps. Mama stopped talking and her mouth flopped open. Her eyes got big around as two eggs frying in a skillet. I'm Martha Timms, the old woman said. Your son has been with me. He come to protect me from men that tried to burn my cabin and hurt me. Mama made a gulping sound when she swallowed. Martha Timms smiled. May I come in? Christine didn't know about witches or any stuff like that. She was too little. All she knew that was that a lady with a soft voice was sitting in our living room. So being too little to listen to scary stories or to know about such things... Christine saw the witch of Blackwater Swamp for what she really was. No sooner had she sat down than Christine trotted over and climbed in her lap. It made Mama a little nervous. Christine wasn't the least bit worried, though. She played patty cake with Martha Timms while I told Mama what had happened to me when I stumbled onto all the stolen stuff in the Weston's garage. Then, as the old woman told Mama about what had happened tonight, Christine lay her little head against the witch's shoulder and smiled at the soft, flowing voice of her, sound of her voice. Christine was fast asleep by the time we finished. The old woman gently handed her to Mama, who put her in bed, then came back to the living room. Martha made a grunting sound when she got up from the couch. Hope you not be too mad at that boy, she told Mama. He brave boy, good boy. I didn't do anything, I shrugged. You already knew the men were coming. You took care of them, and you and the animals. I didn't even help. I just... You do the right thing. You learn not be scared of bad people like Bubba and not listen to threats they make. You risk your own safety to do what be right. That be enough. That be more than most grown men able to do. There was a loud rapping sound of someone knocking at the door. All three of us jumped. Mama glanced at the door, then back at us. Must be the sheriff. I was so worried when I couldn't find Ted, I finally called him. He glanced down. She glanced down at her watch. He said he'd be here as soon as he could. The old woman took a step toward the back of the house, then stopped. Sheriff be good man, she told Mama. But he not need to know that boy have come part have any part in what happened. You tell him, boy, come home right after you call. Ted, you say you see men walking up river and follow, but get scared of dark and hurry home. Say you come right, you come home right after Mama call. She moved toward the kitchen. The knocking sound came again. But what about all the stolen stuff? I called after her in a whisper. How is he going to know about all that if I don't? She smiled. Bubba tell him. I frowned. Huh? Bubba tell him, she repeated. I shook my head. Bubba would never do that. He's too sneaky. Bubba tell him, she winked at me. Maybe have to talk, have to have talk with Bear first, but Bubba tell. One thing Bear like better than grape jelly? Dappy, honey. Believe me, Bubba gonna tell Sheriff everything. The knocking sound came one last time. I glanced at the door for only a second. When I turned around, the witch of Blackwater Swamp was gone. We stuck to the little white lie, just like the old woman asked us to. Sheriff asked me about the men, like how many and who they were. But before I could answer, another knock came at our door. Mama opened it and it was one of, sheriff's dep one of the sheriff's deputies stood there. He tipped his hat and looked past her to where the sheriff was sitting on our couch. Anthony, you best get out of here, he announced. That old witch... Who lives out in the swamp just come up to the bridge in a boat 
She says she's got Bubba Larkin out to her shack. Told me to tell you to hurry before one of the animals, one of her animals, eats him and gets sick. Sheriff excused himself and scurried off after the deputy. Mama closed the door and we hugged each other so tight I thought my eyes were going to pop out of my head. Lakeview turned out to be a pretty nice town without Bubba Larkin and Barbara Weston. They went to trial about six months after the men went to the island. With What with Bubba's signed confession and Sheriff's testimony, it wasn't much of a trial, though. They both went to prison. It was hard to find out anything about Jimmy. Word at school was that Bubba told the Sheriff that since Jimmy was so small, they would squeeze him into the air conditioner vents. They could steal things and leave no trace of a break-in. Talk had it that Jimmy spent a few months in juvenile hall, then went to California to live with an aunt. Nobody really knew for sure, though. So like I said, Lakeview turned out to be a pretty nice town, except for the small group that hung around down at Connors and told terrifying stories about the old witch of Blackwater Swamp. Most of the people were pretty nice. I made some good friends there. Two years later, when we moved to New Mexico, I really hated to leave. Hanging around with Don Lyons finally got me hooked on books. When I packed, I took my Nintendo to the trash. It was old and beat up anyway. Besides, there wasn't room to pack it with all the books I had collected. One of the best books I had was an old, tattered book about animals and the medicines that could be used to cure them when they were sick. It was a big book. I had to use both hands just to pick it up. It had a leather back on it that was cracked and weathered. It smelled of smoke from the open fireplace in Martha Tim's shack. I learned a lot about animals from that old book. I learned even more from the witch of Blackwater Swamp. The memories of her, the animals, and the book would always stay with me. And this is like a little ending part. One of Daddy's prized souvenirs was the picture. In fact, he wouldn't even pack it. He was scared the glass frame might get broken, and he didn't want it damaged in any way. When we got in the car and backed out of the driveway, I shrugged at the for sale sign in our front yard. Then I glanced down at the picture that Daddy had put on my lap. I would hold it all the way to our new home in New Mexico. It was my job to make sure nothing happened to it. It was a picture of a giant alligator snapping turtle. The thing was huge. Its beak was more like some giant dinosaur than like a turtle. A mountainous ridge ran down the center of its shell with two little ridges beside it. It lay half hidden in black water. In the background was a rickety wooden shack, and standing next to the shack was an old woman. I could barely make her out. She stood in the shadows. She was as black as the night, with white hair that was as wild and free as the clouds. She was Martha Timms. She was the witch of Blackwater Swamp. She was smiling. The end.